I'm Kier from In Defense of, a fandom inclusion and community podcast that's part of the Gun and Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on this network are individually owned, and the opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other really interesting geeky shows at gunageeknetwork.com. Welcome to episode 237 of Better Podcasting. On this show, we look forward to the 2020 holiday season and what it might mean to hobby podcasters. In this week's Better Podcasting Download, we rapid fire through a bunch of podcast news from the last couple of weeks. Pew, pew. And finally, in this week's Better Podcast, we have somebody who doesn't like a popular piece of podcast production software. Lauren, I'm not popular and people don't like me. Welcome to Better Podcasting. With a combined history of over a thousand episodes and starting as early as 2008, we are hobby podcasters through and through, just like you. That's why we are different. We minimize the money talk so that you can focus on building a better podcast. Here are the hosts for the show, Stephen John Drew and Stargate Pioneer. Welcome to an all-new episode of Better Podcasting. This is episode 237, and I am Stephen John Drew, and with me, of course, is Pioneer, comma, Stargate. Please call me SP, and it is great to be podcasting in the Better Podcasting studio. Once again, in the midst of construction, yes, behind the curtain, there's all sorts of fun stuff happening in the SP studios, but I'm going to put that aside. It's Friday night, the contractors have gone home, and it's time to record our better podcasting podcast. We got a big show tonight, so we are looking forward to talking about a bunch of stuff, aren't we, Stephen? Absolutely. And the first thing we'll kick it off here is with a how I save my podcast story. If you didn't know this, we do a segment often at the top of the show where if you had something go wrong with your podcast, you have an opportunity to tell us how you fixed it so that people can get to know things that sometimes go wrong, learn a little bit, and hopefully better equip themselves if something goes wrong with their podcast. And today, we have a video clip. Yes, if you didn't know this, we do have a full video companion to the show over at betterpodcasting.com. So we have a a full video clip from the wonderful Jeremy Dennis. And I suspect in this clip, because of course I've previewed the clip beforehand, like you should do with your podcast, I suspect he'll tell us what podcast he is from. Hey guys, this is Jeremy from the Transmissions Podcast, and I have a How I Save My Podcast story. Uh, last week, I was editing our alt mode show, which is about Transformers, comics, and media, and I it was my week to do the comic review. And when I went to get ready to do the review, I in the prep work, I I saw that it was already in my OneNote file. So I was like, oh, I've already done it. I forgot about it. So come time to actually record it. And I had not actually fully written out the review. It was just like basic information. So as we're recording, I'm stumbling through it and um, just trying to figure out what to say and kind of writing it in my head as I'm talking. And my co-host didn't seem to notice, but I felt like I was start, starting and stopping and stumbling. And it was just, in my mind, I, I just wasn't happy with it. And uh, I guess kind of fortunately for us, our editor has had to take some time off for his work that actually gives him money. Um, so we were splitting the editing duties and it was my job to edit that show. So I took the time to rewrite my review re-record my review and just plug it right in because basically we we do a summary of the the media we're we're reviewing and then we just talk about it after so the summary part was what i just wasn't happy with so i was just able to re-record it plug it in there and the finished version no one's gonna know just the the people that got to listen to us record it live they just got a bonus when they actually listened to the recorded show Something's different. Something changed in the matrix. So anyway, uh, that was thought I would just send that in as a how I save my podcast. Um, again, I'm Jeremy from the Transmissions Podcast. You can find us at transmissionspodcast.com. Um, we have two weekly shows, one about Transformers toys and one, as I said, about 
comics and media TV shows, the new Netflix series and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks and uh, love your show. Keep on uh, doing great work. Thank you for sending that in, Jeremy. That was fantastic. Much appreciated. And you know what? Uh, I think that that's an important lesson that podcasters should learn because there is, I think it's a fair statement that there is a lot of people like us out there that are doing podcasts streamed live. We've talked about the challenges that come with streaming live. And sometimes that might make people think that you should just go and uh, stick with what you have and and you should do one take sort of thing. And, and that's what you have for a podcast. And if you've ever attended our live shows, you know that often we redo things during the show because we make a mistake or we want to do something over. And sometimes we have done stuff after the fact as well. And I think that that is OK for podcasters to know that if you play something back and you don't like it, go ahead, re-record it if you can slide it all in there stealthily, because sometimes you can make it seamless if you're recording on the right day or with, you know, the equipment in the same place that it was. Uh, sometimes it stands out like a sore thumb, but definitely uh, it's worth, in my opinion, redoing something if you're really unhappy with it, like Jeremy was. Yeah, I've got three things to say here on top of thank you very much, Jeremy, for sending it. It was a joy to hear how I saved my podcast story and actually see it since you sent a video clip on it. But three things. First of all, as a podcaster, you're often harder on yourself, especially if you're editing your own show. You're really critical of the way that you actually sound, the stuff that you say, and you can be overcritical. So please don't be overcritical of yourself. Just be as critical as you are of any of the other co-hosts that you might have or guests or anybody else that's been on your podcast. Don't go overboard on it. But in this particular case, I tend to trust Jeremy that he wasn't overboard on it. He just wasn't as prepared as he wanted to be. And he felt like he wanted to re-record it. So that is good. Second thing I wanted to say is editing is good. We've said this on this podcast many, many times that editing is good. And it catches stuff like this where you can make the show better in post-production and in this particular case by completely recording, but you can take things out. You can take out crutch words. There are so many things that you can do in post to make your podcast better rather than just take what you have streamed and then send that out as a podcast. It just makes it better, especially in a competitive podcast skill. So that's number two. Number three is I wanted to punctuate the fact that sometimes complete redos are necessary. Sometimes I've had to redo complete shows because of recording mishaps. But in this particular case, it was a segment and was a segment of a segment, but it was his summary in the segment that he wanted to redo. And that is acceptable. But sometimes you can just take out a sentence or a word and make it sound better. But sometimes you have to completely redo. So that's the three things. First of all, don't be too hard on yourself because you're often harder on yourself than anybody else. Second is editing is good. We've said it on the show before, and I'll say it again on the show. And three, sometimes complete redos are necessary. The last part of the year is usually pretty special for both of us in our personal lives and with our hobby podcasting. If you are a longtime listener of Better Podcasting, you know that both Stephen and I each get an episode of Better Podcasting at the end of the year to discuss our podcasting gear changes throughout the years. A bonus, it's a great episode for both of us because we geek out over gear. You might also know if you watch the Guinea Geek Show that Stephen sends up his annual signals to space as he lights up his home, his neighborhood, his island, and hearts of many through his overly competitive holiday home lighting displays. I suppose I should put in smart lighting displays, but in, in, you get the thing. It's the whole Griswold thing, right? I get to set up my geek holiday tree. It's got ornaments of all kinds, including spaceships, classic muscle cars, classic trucks, and geek types of vehicles of all sorts. I really like doing that. It's set up right outside my podcasting door. And I like to let it light up and sound off and everything. It's, it's just a special time of year for me. And on top of that, both of us take time off to spend with family and friends and take time away from podcasting. 
All this has been an annual tradition for us since we started Better Podcasting back in 2015. This time of year also gives us an opportunity to decompress and think about what a fantastic year it's been and possibly set goals for the next year. But this is 2020 and it will be different, not only for us, but most likely for you too. So as we round the corner of the calendar year and October slips into November as we're recording this, we wanted to take a moment and reflect on changes that we see to the upcoming holiday season and what it will mean for you and how you can prepare for a different holiday podcasting season in 2020. So Stephen, how did this all start? It started a couple of months ago, didn't it? Yeah, a couple of months ago, both of us here were chatting and starting to look ahead at the end of 2020. It's what we often do this time of year because it is so busy. We like to lay out more concretely the end of the year process for better podcasting. And we were looking at that and thinking a little bit about the holidays and how we are going to plan things through a sort of certain uncertain environment. Since we were focusing on the better podcasting episode schedule, our thoughts, of course, went to the end of the year where we do our gear episodes. We both looked at what we had purchased so far in the year, and at the time, both of our cupboards were fairly bare for our podcast gear purchases for 2020. Now, this is a a little unusual for us because usually halfway through the year, we find out that we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we've experimented with and played with in order to talk about on better podcasting. But with our current setup, it just wasn't there. It was a lot more empty. After all, the entire basis of our year end episodes is to be able to talk about the gear that we've acquired over the year and how we have slowly evolved our setup. And it was looking like we had not done any evolution in the year uh, of 2020 with everything going on. And there really is a few reasons why when we were looking at this a couple months ago, our cupboards were bare. The first is purchasing uncertainty. Also, gear availability and the lack of new gear at the time is worth note. The strength of our previous gear purchases, which led to a strong setup, also non-podcast priorities that were moving up the list, and full disclosure, the struggle to keep podcasting. And today we want to go through some of these things as well as some other things to do with how our year of podcasting has looked a little bit different and how it might make your end of the year for your podcast different this year in a crazy, crazy year that has been the year 2020. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this in 50 years from now, please, please go look up the year 2020. You might have to go and look on the dark web because I'm pretty sure that it will have been purged from all history books by then. But still, go look it up. It was a crazy year. It was. So let's take uh, those things that we laid out in depth a little bit more. And we'll start with the purchasing uncertainty. There was the typical gear purchasing slowdown following the holiday season of 2019. But for the most part, in early January or February 2020, it was looking to be an interesting podcast gear year. We had done some interviews in the previous year with some of the gear manufacturers. We had heard stories of other gear manufacturers that were looking forward to announcing new podcast specific gear for podcasters. And that just didn't materialize as we thought it was going to be because in mid to late March, 2020, most people didn't know what the situation was going to be next week, let alone next month or for the rest of the year. Most podcasters that we knew were in lockdown. There was a lot of gig economy and hourly wage employees that were temporarily laid off or furloughed. And people that normally would have had the money to purchase podcasting gear didn't. And those like us didn't want to spend on unnecessary purchases. In fact, it wasn't until early September that either of us made a purchase of any new or additional gear. And that was with me with my Zoom H8 that I had purchased. Although we did have to replace some gear throughout the year, I had to replace my podcast monitor speakers. But for the most part, we didn't buy new gear that we were reviewing for better podcasting. But still to this day in October and November, there are a lot of podcasters and consumers with uh, available resources that are being more cautious about their spending. And neither of us would argue with somebody thinking along those lines. 
Now, so on the flip side, we also mentioned the reduced podcasting gear availability this year. So with millions of people teleworking and distance learning for the first time ever in the numbers that people were, gear started to fly off the shelves and digital storefronts in the April-May time period. As a matter of fact, it's still this late in the year, difficult to find a Logitech C920 or C922 webcam. And those that you do find are no longer at the lower price point that they were at this time last year in 2019. Gear like ring lights, XLR USB microphones like the Samsung Q2U, tablets, laptops, desktops, modems, and Wi-Fi routers all flew out of stores as people struggled with the demands of online work and group calls from home. Now, I was fortunate enough just to have completed several tech refresh refreshes and upgrades, including I updated all of the laptops in the house. I installed a new mesh Wi-Fi system, and I started a trial of a newish audio interface that was the Motu M2. So I had some gear that was kicking around the house that I normally did not, and I'm glad I did because of what happened later. But not everyone was as lucky. And gear became difficult to find. Matter of fact, I remember being flabbergasted. Yes, I'm going to use the term flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted in late March and early April to still see some sales on new devices as retailers took a bit longer and they were slow to adjust to the 2020 normal. So they were still thinking in the normal terms of gear and they were still having sales on gear until it wasn't available anymore. So in addition to the unprecedented demand on the gear, supply chains were overrun as shipping became extremely delayed, manufacturing plants were shut down, raw materials were not being produced in the same quantities as before, not to mention several manufacturers shifted over to medical or cleaning products from their regular manufacturing. We also noticed that new product announcements were delayed, conferences that normally would have seen new test promotional gear and just tech did not happen in person and without knowing the future some companies started to slow delay and postpone near gear new gear announcements and the development of new products slowed not only in the podcast industry and the audio industry but all industry as it shifted to virtual socially distanced environments instead of in-person collaboration at a work environment all this meant that some gear like the long proposed samsung Q9U has yet to make it to market. It still is not available now. It might be in another week or so, but it's not available right now. We've also noticed that new NVIDIA graphics cards are being produced in much less quantity than the market is demanding because there's just not availability for it. And then holding, uh, uh, getting a hold of new products like the Zoom P4 means longer online waits. I mean, people have ordered them and they have to wait for weeks or months in order to get them. And just going into Amazon, I'm going to speak as an American here. I'm sorry for the rest of the world, but I'm going to speak as an American here. So just going online to Amazon and clicking next day delivery just isn't an assured solution anymore. It was becoming the norm in early 2020 and late 2019 and just wasn't the case at all. And I know Canada was getting a little bit better with like next day delivery, at least two day delivery from Amazon. But I know that wasn't a shirt and I know it is not the norm for the entire world, but I know in America it was, and it just wasn't there anymore. Matter of fact, Amazon itself got swamped and it started using other party distributors, which they were trying to get away from, but just because the demand was so much, they overwhelmed UPS and FedEx and United States Postal Service as well. All this means in the holiday season of 2020 that if you are asking for podcasting gear or maybe you're giving podcasting gear as a gift, you're going to have to think ahead or perhaps think about not even being able to obtain it in time for the holidays. So maybe giving a gift card to the individual for the amount of the gift might be better and then they can order it themselves and you don't have to worry about obtaining it yourself. Uh, as well as you can usually plan to participate in an upgrade cycle with your year-end goals. You should be aware of these limitations. It's not just for gift giving. It could be like at the end of the year, you're going to take advantage of the sales to get gear yourself. I'm not even sure if the sales are going to be there this year, let alone the gear availability. So just keep that in mind as you forge ahead through the holiday 2020 season. We wanted to foot stomp that now to give you a chance to plan ahead for the end of the year. 
the next section that we want to talk about as we're talking about the year in review um, and whatnot is the strength of our previous gear purchases. This was one of the other big reasons for the two of us. Even though there have been a lot of positive changes in the podcast gear space over the last few years, the basics of podcasting really hasn't changed all that much. A podcaster speaks into a microphone and records what is being said. This might be through a portable handheld recorder, or maybe a mixer recorder, audio interface, or USB microphone into a DAW, streaming online. There's a whole bunch of different ways that this is accomplished, but really the basics is the same. Someone talks into a microphone and makes a podcast. And both of us already have had gear that has been working well for us. Well, maybe except for the last couple of weeks, SP. However, while we have both had on our radar a little bit of an idea of some things we would like to upgrade to eventually, the bottom line is that our gear is working just fine overall. SP's mixer continues to be rock solid. His H6 is great. My L8 seems to be fine. And really, the bottom line is that we both have not purchased the cheapest thing available. We put a little bit of money into it. And it's paying off, meaning that in a year of restrictions like there's been so far, it's not really affected us because our gear continues to work. It's really one of the benefits with spending a little bit more money because sometimes that will last a little bit longer. And then when you are in an unknown situation like this year where things are at a premium to fine, you're not strapped trying to patch the hole that has been made by gear failing on you because you've cheaped out. Now, both of us have purchased gear in the past with future proofing, in addition to some of those ways that we just mentioned about buying a little, a little better quality gear. For example, neither one of us are really working with a one channel audio interface. And the ability to be able to multi track means that we can record ourselves in multiple ways, like a soundboard. If we do use a soundboard during our streaming to put in the intro or the outro, we are able to record that on a separate track from our own. We also take in factors for consideration when we purchase gear for future proofing. That's really why we call the show Better Podcasting. Yes, there are cheaper ways to do podcasting than some of the ways that we recommend, but really we are trying to help you make your podcast better. And we think one of the ways that you do that is future proofing. So you're a little bit more prepared in uncertain situations like we are now. But if you do end up sticking with podcasting and you decide to go beyond just the simple cheap setup, you really might find that investing in more than that basic investment of a basic microphone can be the difference between having to spend a few hundred dollars all over again or just adding in a little extra piece of equipment as you upgrade your path. Both of us already have backup pieces of gear in place thanks to previous purchases that are still working to these days. Yeah, I, I made a little joke earlier about SP possibly having something on the fritz. Well, he's using a piece of backup gear right now because of that. So thankfully, with all of this sort of purchase history, neither one of us have really been forced into trying to upgrade in the year 2020, something that not only would probably have been more expensive, but probably would have left ourselves a little bit strapped and maybe pigeonholed into something that we didn't necessarily want to buy. Indeed. So we're going to move away from gear right now. We're going to talk about non-podcasting priorities and how it has impacted the holidays of 2020, or we project it to be impacting the holidays of 2020. So over the years, we made it pretty clear that if you're going to hobby podcast, you should expect to spend money on podcasting. Well, at first, some might think that this is a waste of money. We challenge you to consider what other hobbies that people dedicate themselves to that do not have some form of expense involved. Whether it's buying new golf clubs or simply buying paint supplies for rock painting, the reality is hobbies often have an expense of some form attached to them. And we think that hobbies are important. They can be really good for your state of mind and for growing yourself. And as such, budgeting for hobbies is completely reasonable in our books. But as we touched on in our purchase uncertainty category earlier in this episode, 
budgets had to be adjusted this year, and that likely impacted your hobby budget. This is because this year has been full of different purchase priorities. Even if you were one of the lucky ones to keep your job throughout the year, reality is that for many people, while they place their money, it had to change where they place their money. And if you have school age kids, for example, you probably saw a combination of in-class, homeschool, and online learning. Was your technology up to the challenge? A lot of people had to do upgrades to their older technology in order to keep up. Perhaps you had to do a computer upgrade or buy a whole new laptop, a tablet, or more in some cases. You may have had family move back home that would have otherwise been away for school and you had to refurnish the space. If you were one of the ones that started to work from home, you may have had office expenses such as desks, chairs, internet upgrades, and cell phone plans upgrading. But perhaps your podcast budget went to another hobby, such as doing anything, another hobby, to get yourself away from your studio since you are literally working in it. Now, doing some family activities since the kids weren't in school, perhaps even buying on-demand movies during lockdown so you can just sit there and watch a movie, whereas before you would have gone to the theater. And as we said before, in a time of uncertainty, spending money for gear might not be in your personal best interest. For many people, this will translate into a sparse holiday podcasting holiday gear season. However, this year's differences go beyond the finances, right, Stephen? Yes. And that's, I think, the meat of this episode is what it means to you as you sort of go through the end of year process for your podcast. And let's start off by reflecting on that. Reflect on your year of podcasting. We're big advocates here of taking time at the end of your year of podcasting Starting around now, because let's be honest, it's November. It's almost the last six months of the year 2020. And we are huge advocates for taking time to look at what you accomplished over the year. It's a good time to think about what you did well and things you might want to improve on going into the next year. But if you're anything like us, you might have done a lot less for your podcast this year than you had originally set out to do at the end of last year. We've said it before in this episode and elsewise that we have found it personally a little hard compared to usual to really motivate ourselves to continue hobby podcasting. An example of this, we set out our year early on with huge ambitions to start a whole bunch of extra content over at betterpodcasting.com. We have a lot of things that we would love to go and create over there. And so we did some changes with our show in order to do that. But then the year 2020 happened and all of a sudden other life things made us feel less motivated, such as what we mentioned earlier in this. And a lot of those things haven't been done. It's just an example about here on Better Podcasting, how we have been affected in that. And as we look back, we have not accomplished what we had set out to do. We think that it's important as a hobby podcaster that you recognize that the year 2020 has been different and it is okay if you didn't accomplish what you had set out to do. And when you think about what you didn't accomplish, try to consider the specifics about why you aren't where you wanted to be when you set your goals at the end of 2019. You probably have some really valid reasons if you're like us. Perhaps you were one of those people who did have kids in in school that were doing remote learning or even doing full homeschooling. How much time did you have to help them with that? That's time that you probably would have usually had elsewise maybe to put towards your podcast. Were you working at home in the same place that you podcast? Whether it was just because you didn't want to spend more time in that space or because your space was actually taken over by your work during your work hours, and thus it wasn't easy to access your podcast equipment, these are really valid reasons why you may not have been able to get yourself in the mood or physically got yourself in front of equipment to do stuff with your podcast. Or was it simply because you just found the year to be so heavy and you really just preferred to, at the end of the day, plunk yourself in front of the TV watching The Bachelor, knowing that your favorite host of Better Podcasting, Stargate Pioneer, was also watching it at the same time. It's okay. 
that's totally fine if you just would rather have done that because again, we talked about it. It can be a little exhausting with everything going on. So maybe you did that instead. As a hobby podcaster, we do think it's really important to give yourself a little extra leeway than you usually would when you're reflecting on your accomplishments or lack of accomplishments over the year. We started Better Podcasting to give hobby podcasters really a voice in the podcast advice space. And that's because we think that a lot of the podcast advice shows out there do focus on the business side. And the reality is in a very financially troubling year like 2020, you probably heard a lot of the, those business-oriented podcasts about podcasting really focus on the business aspect. Because when you are running your own business and things are a struggle financially, you really need to hunker down and really pound the pavement to try to make money. So it wasn't uh, a opportunity for these podcasters who are trying to make business with their podcaster to ease off the, the gas. No, but with a hobby podcaster, we think that you want to be able to allow yourself that freedom to ease off the gas. And so that's a big difference between a hobby podcaster this year and a business podcaster, because we really do think that fundamentally, someone who is just podcasting for fun should have allowed themselves to have a little bit more room to just have more time to themselves. It should be podcasting for fun, at least if you're a hobby podcaster, in our opinion. And if that meant that you had to ease off, don't, don't get yourself down for that. You're looking at the long-term picture of continuing to do, enjoy your hobby, so be okay with that. However, we do think that you should be open and honest with yourself about this. If you believe that there was a reason that you took it easy, ensure that it was authentic. There is a big difference between this year's challenges getting in the way and just falling into the vicious circle of podcast procrastination that we've talked about before on this show. One key way that we think you can help determine this is to think about how you handled some of the unexpected situations that came up. Did you recognize your struggles as they were happening? And if so, what action did you try to take to pivot? If you didn't pivot, did you make a conscious decision to put something on the back burner or did you make ongoing excuses to justify why you didn't pivot? So make sure that you take a look at why you had your struggles this year and then how you reacted to them, whether you can just overcome them when the 2020-ish goes away or maybe you need to pivot in your life. So we'll see. So in the end of the year, one of the things that we recommend is setting your goals for next year. See, when we talked about it before, but this year is a little different, right? Yeah, that is our next point here. As you go through your planning for your next year, you should really think about the fact that COVID has impacted your goals from this year, likely. Although it is looking like we're set to have another year of challenges, some of the ones that we've mentioned in the show already, if you know that you're going to be facing these challenges as you go into 2021, you can probably better handle the situation. Last year, people probably set their goals for development of their podcast based off of no idea that 2020 was going to happen. They might have been planning to attend some conferences in person, attend seminars, etc. The odds are, if you had these on your goals for 2020, they probably didn't happen for you. But as you go into 2021 and you know there's a good chance these things aren't going to happen, you might plan things a little bit differently. Instead of trying to play catch up, you're going to set your expectations for worst case scenario. Knowing that there probably won't be conferences, you might set a more attainable goal. Like instead of planning to make connections through conferences, you might plan to make connections through another method. Maybe you plan to reach out to one person each month within your craft and just have a virtual coffee with them. In 2019, this probably sounded like a weird idea, a weird long shot, but everybody now knows that in-person gatherings are not really happening, so the idea of just a virtual coffee might be more appealing to other people. And so if you plan to do that in 2021, people are probably more open to that idea than when you were first going into 2020. But also, consider how you felt 
this year when you were setting development goals for your podcast and set more realistic goals as such. It's important that you set realistic goals that you're going to be able to attain because it really can be an excellent motivator for you. Let's use a non-podcast example here. Let's say you want to start running on the treadmill. This is something that you don't usually do a lot of exercise, but you're like, I'm going to set the goal of running on the treadmill. If you start off by saying you're going to start running on the treadmill for one hour a day, you're probably going to quickly find yourself defeated because you're going from no exercise to trying to run for one hour. But on the flip side, if you go, okay, I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to start with 15 minutes of walking and then work your way up. Each little success that you have might motivate you to push it further. And so if you're setting realistic goals for your podcast, that can motivate you and get you out of that sort of funk that a lot of people are feeling. But if you go into 2021, and you plan on everything being back to normal the way you were with 2019 goals, you probably are going to just feel defeated. So really, set yourself realistic goals for 2021 based off of our current environment, and that might look quite different than what you had going into 2020, and that's totally okay. For example, say you're feeling that you've fallen off your release schedule and it's becoming very inconsistent in 2020. So every time you publish, you may be feeling like, well, my audience has had months now of hit or miss releases. Why does it matter? So in this case, what we would recommend is try to set a realistic goal to get yourself back on track. You may feel more accomplished when you're in a routine again. So you could take two approaches to achieve this. Perhaps you could start by saying, I'm going to get half my episodes next month out on time and then work your way up to more than two, like all of your episodes in the month. Or maybe the other way, the flip way that you could go about this is that your current schedule doesn't work. Perhaps your goal is to find a new release schedule that does work for you, even if it's releasing fewer episodes. We actually had an episode about this a few months back. So the bottom line is that your 2021 goal list might be a lot smaller than your 2020 goal list. And we think that's okay. As a hobby podcaster, you need to be having fun and feeling accomplished can be a huge motivator. We also think that if you're going to be taking any break during the holidays, that you should specifically add a goal to resume your podcast. So while in the past, you may not have needed that, the reality is that with such an odd year, you might find it really easy to slip into that podcast procrastination territory and find yourself months down the line before you actually restart your show. So making a goal and a specific date, and maybe you communicate that with your audience to have your podcast back up and running in 2021 will make getting out of the holidays in 2020 better for you. So that brings us kind of into the preparing for the holiday season. And your holiday season might vary. Your experience might vary. And the last thing that we want to mention is how this could look different for you. So often the end of the year is a time for family and friends to get together and enjoy each other's company. Many people often travel to see other family. And for some, the months of November and December can be a revolving door of visitors. However, this year, that might not be the case for you, and it might impact your podcasting. So whether due to restrictions or simply an inability to travel, maybe you can't get across a border, your holiday season may look very different. This could impact your ability to podcast in multiple ways. For example, if you're one who usually finds yourself participating in a variety of events, you may usually find yourself with little time to do anything with your hobby during the season. But if you're not in this situation, you might actually have more time than usual. Perhaps you don't need to take that break that you normally would. Or if you still do want to take that break, because again, it can be an opportunity to recharge your batteries, perhaps you might be able to spend more time working on some behind the scenes aspect of your podcast. You know, the the new music bumps, maybe some new graphics or an entirely new segment. On the flip side, we think that it's worth noting that while big holiday gatherings can be a lot of work, the reality is that the social aspect of these gatherings is a fun part for a lot of people. So when you think back to holiday gatherings, do you remember the time that you spent getting your house prepped? Or do you remember having everyone crammed in your kitchen eating a meal? 
If these gatherings aren't happening for you, you might be finding yourself spending more effort to enjoy the holidays. And if you have young ones, perhaps make special memories for them too. This might mean it's even more important to take a break from your podcasting and perhaps you may need to even take more time away from your podcast than you normally would do in a normal year. But maybe, just maybe, you can find a way to combine these two things together if you're finding yourself in a different situation than usual. Have you been itching to try to get a loved one behind a microphone? Maybe now is your golden opportunity. If you find yourself with more time on your hands over the holiday season, maybe this provides you a chance to try to get a family member or a friend that's in your social circle, your bubble, whatever you want to call it, to try out podcasting. Just keep in mind that if you're going to do this, it's important to keep in mind that they won't be as comfortable behind the microphone as you are, and they might not be as excited as you are as well. So you have to play to what your co-host is giving you back. And finally, maybe podcasting is one of the only consistent variables in your world these days. Since podcasting can be very cyclical in its process, the weekly show that we do here on Better Podcasting or Guinea Geek or Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., it can be a pretty good distraction from regular life. This is because you're constantly focusing on the next step within the cycle of podcasting. You may find that this year it's important for you to keep that cycle going when you might usually take a break. If your hobby podcasting is one of the main fun factors in your life right now, you may find that this year's decision lends itself to continuing your process throughout the year and throughout the holiday season. If you're going to keep doing this, maybe you set yourself a plan to keep on top of it. Although your holiday season may be less busy than usual, you will likely still have variables you need to take into account throughout the end of the year. So come up with a plan on how you can balance podcasting with all these variables and try to make it happen. As a hobby podcaster, you should be podcasting for fun. And if podcasting is your main source of fun, then you should find a way to keep having that fun. In summary, the year 2020 has been very different for podcasting, although how different it has been will vary and depend on your personal circumstances. Regardless, it's important to take steps now to help adjust to a different holiday experience than you may be used to in previous years. This goes from tech and gear purchases to prioritizing other things in your personal life. You may even have to modify your typical end-of-the-year process to better reflect where we're at right now. But don't forget to ass assess for non-2020 changes that you would normally still need to take into account as well. Just because it's this wacky year of 2020 doesn't mean that the overall goals don't need to be modified as well. It's something that you should really reflect on your show every year and consider how you can make it better, and that's no different than any other year. Remember, always, always plan the end of the year to keep having fun. We say it almost every episode because it's true. Having fun keeps podcasting easy. It makes it more enjoyable. It makes it a motivator for yourself. So plan the end of your year in a manner that continues you to have that fun and allows you to have the freedom to enjoy the podcasting in this crazy year. This is the Better Podcasting Download. All right, are you ready for the rapid fire? Come on down, SP. You're the next contestant on Better Podcasting Download. In the past two weeks since we had Better Podcasting, there's just a bunch of news that has occurred that will affect hobby podcasting. So we're going to go through it in rapid fire mode this week. And if we need to come back and go in depth on anything in a future download, we definitely will. So the first thing that happened was Anchor and Spotify launched music in podcasts. It's only going to be shows that can be distributed through Spotify. I think this is great for the people that want to have music podcasts, but I don't know if we can necessarily, I mean, it gets back to the definition of podcast and whether or not you can really call it a podcast or whatever. I think it's just going to be fun to for people that want to do music podcasts to be able to finally do it and not worry about DCMA music takedowns. There's a lot of caveats that go with this, but we just wanted to mention it here. I'll also say I saw some people riled up about it. I like that. 
the what do you call it podcast yeah. what, what's a podcast yeah. and from a, from a hobby standpoint you just want to have a show sometimes right it doesn't necessarily have to be a podcast all right, so moving on, Google, there's a bunch of stuff happening with Google. So first of all, the Google Assistant is on its way to support third-party podcast players. I think this is good, and it might not really matter for hobby podcasters. Just to be able to sync your Google device to the app that you use is going to be good. So, I mean, I don't use Android, but I know Steven does. I know Chris does over on the Guinea Geek Show. And to be able to sync what you are listening to on your phone, because that's largely where people do listen to podcasts, to your home device, whatever that is, will be good. So in this case, the Google Assistant. Uh, also in the Google Podcasting news, they are going to show podcasters more of the search results in the podcast manager in the google podcast manager i think that's excellent so it will allow you to go in and find out like what sorts of searches are is your show popping up in and what changes that you might be able to make in order to get more visibility in google search i think that's pretty good and rounding out the google podcast news over the past three weeks is google podcast is now the number three podcast player via libsyn statistics Now, that third place is only 1.9%, but it's still third place and it's moving up. And this is all stuff that we kind of predicted years ago, just because there are so many Google devices out there. If you inherently put podcasts on a Google mobile device, people are going to listen to podcasts that way, right? Well, maybe it's it's still got some work in my books, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with it. I would only imagine that this 1.9% will increase. I don't know where its ceiling is going to be, but it's definitely not 1.9%. I project it to be 10, 20, 30% as the years roll on. Moving on, there was this whole thing about people hijacking podcasts and putting them on Anchor and Anchor distributing podcasts. Basically, you take a podcast that somebody else has done, you throw it on Anchor, and all of a sudden you get the podcast and then you get monetization out of that. And everybody who had the original content was uh, that was losing money off of it, off the listens, was not pleased about it, to say the least. One of the ways to go about this is to upgrade the RSS tags. There's two RSS tags that are new according to the podcast index. One is podcast transcript and one is podcast locked. So the podcast lock tag makes it more difficult to steal a show and throw it on another podcast media host. Not everybody is using these tags yet, so we'll see when they become more pervasive throughout everywhere. I would say that if you're worried about losing control of your podcast, if your RSS feed, whoever owns your RSS feed, like for better podcasting, full disclosure, it's Lipson. So if Lipson would use the podcast lock tags, then we wouldn't have to worry about our podcast getting stolen as much. I, I don't know that I agree with that. Um, I I question the podcast locked. The podcast locked is as good as the people who are respecting that tag. And if someone is trying to steal a podcast to make money off of it, then they'll find another way. And, and that could be putting it on a service that doesn't respect the locked. Or it could be taking it a step further and they use an intermediate. So they they go and um, they maybe make a mirror RSS feed that strips the lock tag and then uploads that. Or they use software that actually downloads it and then uploads it manually, right? Like people who are, are stealing podcasts are doing it for malicious intent and people with malicious intent will always find a way. I think it's interesting that for the first time ever, this is a huge issue. I mean, it's probably been an issue before, but it's a, like a huger issue now. And it just speaks to the fact that podcasting is is a bigger piece of the entertainment industry than it ever used to be. So uh, piracy is now a thing for podcasters, not just stealing anybody else's content and throwing it on your podcast. But now your podcast could be stolen and, and uh, put somewhere else. 
Uh, the next thing that we want to talk about is Descript. It, it now has a video editor for those that are unfamiliar with Descript. It basically takes a transcript and you're able to edit via the transcript versus the waveform. A lot of people that aren't really techie like this more than they would have liked a wave editor. I don't know how this is going to impact the video editing. I hate jump cuts on YouTube already. And if this is going to enable jump cuts in video editing, I don't know if I would like that. So I have to read more about this. If anybody has experience using the Descript video editor, please let me know because I would like to know more about it. Another event that occurred in the podcast industry is iHeartRadio is going to buy VoxNest and Spreaker. This is part of the overall industry consolidation that a lot of people are predicting for quite some time. How this will affect hobby podcasters is, again, this is big industry that is coming in to take over uh, another piece of the pie of, of podcasting. And this is something as a hobby podcaster we're going to continue to take a look at and just because... At some point, your hobby podcast might not be able to be distributed as it has been back in 2018, 2019. You know, 2021, 2022 might have a, a completely different way to do things. So we're going to keep our eyes on this. Uh, full disclosure, I used to have a Spreaker account. I don't have a Spreaker account anymore, and I'm just fine with that. I, I, I don't feel like I've missed out on anything. I, I feel like uh, it was a secondary uh, media host for me simply for the audio only. Uh, streaming. And I feel like audio only streaming is not that big of a market anymore. I think video streaming is a big market nowadays, but I don't think audio streaming is as big as it ever really was. And finally, Stephen, this was a surprise to both of us because apparently neither of us saw the signs of this happening, but I guess it was big behind the scenes. Sure announced a new podcast microphone based on the SM7B. It's called the MV7. And it is USB and XLR. It's $250. So it's a step up from like the Samsung Q2U, the Audio Technica ATR2100, and the Audio Technica AT2005. Uh, this is interesting. I, I've got a whole bunch of comments on this, but uh, we might have to save it for next week for the Better Podcasting Live. Hey, at least sure fanboys now have a way that, and fangirls have a way that they can recommend a cheaper microphone. <laughs> than the $350, $400 SM7B. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there was the sure has the SM58. You have an SM58 on the shelf right behind you, right? I do. Yeah. I don't use it anymore, but maybe one day I'll dig it back out for something, you know, dust it off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, the, the blow into your microphone there. No yeah, problem. Was, if yeah, you have great. news that you'd like us to cover on a future Better Podcasting download, please get in touch with us through any of the ways, including our Discord at betterpodcasting.com slash discord. And the reason we ask you that is because some weeks we struggle to get news. It's not usually a bunch of news like this. Let's go ahead and move on to the Better Pod back. This is where we here at Better Podcasting turn the show over to you as we run through some of your feedback. We call this segment Better Pod back. We got a couple quick things we want to touch on from our Discord server in the past week. I'll start off with the first one because it's more about website stuff and I'm more of the website guy. And the second one is about Audity audio software called Hindenburg. Then SP is the resident Hindenburg expert on this podcast. So let's go ahead here and start off with the first one, which is from Original Waffles Play Comics. You didn't know this in our Discord server. We got a little waffles battle going on. We got new waffles and and original waffles, and maybe one day there'll be blueberry waffles. We'll find out. Two-part question for me. One, those of you with something cool at yourpodcast.com, do you have different addresses for different things? Obviously, having multiple people working on the show should have their own email address, but it's just me. Anyone have any advice for switching over from podcast at gmail.com to something cool at yourpodcast.com? So this is a really cool question because it does harken back to the early days of websites. Like this is something that back in the day, there was, it doesn't matter if it was one person running a website or it was many people running. You always had different email addresses for different things. You had news, you had PR, you had 
questions, you had feedback, you had a bunch of different things at your domain.com. Like that was the way that it was for websites. And I think that to a degree, you can still use that logic, especially if you have a lot of public facing emails. Like in, in my experience, if you have a lot of people working on one project, it can be helpful to use these to really direct emails to the people it most applies to. Like you might have certain people working on a certain aspect of your podcast and maybe you would have that set up. Like let's say you had a few, you had a group of four working on your podcast and two people always took the lead on the news. You might have news at your podcast.com or whatever, your hobby podcast.com. And you might have that only email to those two people. Or you might have a couple of people editing and you would have something like production at your hobbypodcast.com. You could really use that to help direct. But overall, I think that it's easier for people because podcasting is so new and sometimes you're still struggling to get people to subscribe, let alone to communicate. Just have one email that either goes to your whole podcast crew or goes to someone that can direct it as applicable because you're struggling to get people to maybe listen to your podcast. You're struggling to tell them how to subscribe. And now they're trying to reach you. Do you really want them to have to sit there and go, well, I don't know. Does it go to A, B, or C? I don't know. So I think that for public facing, it's almost better just to have one other than maybe your individual host and then use these for like a technical aspect. So you might have one set up for Twitter. You might have one set up for Facebook. And that also kind of will help segment the spam email. So when you start to get spam, you go, oh, I got that from Facebook. Or maybe you want to have a specific one to help pay for services through your podcast. Maybe it's your hosting. Maybe it's uh, some service, some other service, some editing service that you're using. So you can go through one or you can set up one email for each individual service. I think that's a little bit excessive, but yeah, I used to do this with Voices of Defiance. I had several emails with that. I just found it easier just to go down to one email for a show and I would agree with Steven there. So Randy Walker in our discord also posted, he said, I started poking around with Hindenburg. What a terrible software, bad UX. Everything is keyboard shortcuts only. Apparently Randy just had a terrible experience with Hindenburg. Now I've never used Hindenburg. I think I used the Hindenburg journalist a couple of times. That was years ago. So I don't use Hindenburg. I'm not a Hindenburg expert. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> but I will tell you that using a different software for a little bit after about a month, maybe two months, you become really comfortable with it. And that's true with any software. If you're making the jump from Audacity to a paid press, uh, editing program, paid DAW, that is a non-destructive versus the destructiveness of Audacity, it's going to be different for you just from that aspect. And you're going to have to deal with things differently that way. And every editing software is the same. The more you use, the more commonality you see in them. And you just think of, okay, I know I need to do X. And what do I need to do in order to do X? And after a while, you just get used to it. I don't know if I would advocate using multiple different DAWs or editing or processing programs all at the same time. I don't think five or six of them. I, I don't think that's good. I think she should pick one and go with it. Or in an extreme case, like pick two, like one for video, one for audio, but I wouldn't use multiples and I would give it time once you actually get into it. I know a lot of people use Hindenburg and they're very comfortable with it for what it is. And you have to remember what the Hindenburg strength is. It's we're putting multiple clips in to create a story, and that's what it's all about. So if that is the way that you're producing podcasts, Hindenburg is for you. And Damien, the DM, had responded saying, been using Hindenburg for years. It has a learning curve, but I disagree with it being terrible. So I want to put those two in there because I'm curious. What's your experience with Hindenburg? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Get in touch with us to podcast at betterpodcasting.com or come to our Discord at betterpodcasting.com slash discord, or send an email to Stargate Pioneer is the Hindenburg expert at betterpodcasting.com. That email will go nowhere. It's stargatepioneer at geek.com. 
It's been a great show. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any comments about how you're planning to get through the holiday season that we didn't cover, we'd be glad to talk about it on a future show. If you have news, as Stephen was saying before, that you want us to cover, let us know. And more importantly, if you just have a question about podcasting, get it to us. Probably the best place to get a hold of us these days is on a Discord server, which you can find at betterpodcasting.com slash Discord. There's a number of different ways you can get a hold of us if you don't like Discord. So just let us know how you want to get a hold of us and, and we'll direct you to the right way. So for episode 237 of Better Podcasting, I'm Stephen John Drew saying, don't worry, we'll still have our gear episodes this year. Now I'm SP saying, make sure you still have fun with your podcast. It's what hobby podcasters do. See you guys in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Thanks for checking out another episode of Better Podcasting. You can find the full back catalog of Better Podcasting at betterpodcasting.com. If you're into geeky podcasts, please check out the other podcasts on the Gunna Geek Network at gunnageeknetwork.com. This show was produced and edited by Stephen John Drew of Gunna Geek Productions. Voice work was done by L.W. Salinas. Thanks again for listening or watching, and we hope to see you again next week.